The Geek Pub now offers high quality arcade controller kits available in all of your favorite colors. Find them in the Geek Pub store. I started by breaking down the sheet goods into smaller pieces as they're easier for me to handle on the table saw. I also like to use a track saw guide which helps me get straight cuts with a handheld circular saw. Then on the table saw, I cut the pieces down to their final dimensions. If you don't have a table saw, don't worry. You can make this arcade with all handheld tools. After cutting the parts down, I took a second and labeled each one so that I can keep track of them easily. I started cutting down what will be the base of the arcade. To make this look nice, I put 45 degree miters on them, but that's purely optional. The two side pieces get a decorative cutout on them. To make it easier, I taped the two parts together so that I could cut them out at the same time. I then cut the marked section using the bandsaw. A handheld jigsaw would work fine here too. The bandsaw leaves ugly marks on the wood, so I remove them using the spindle sander. All that's left for the base is a little glue and brad nails. All right, so there's two sides to the arcade. There's the side that's going to have the coin door in it, and so we'll cut a hole for that with the jigsaw later on. The other side has a door in it, and so the door is obviously much smaller, and so we need to build a face frame to go around the door. And so what we'll do is we'll glue the face frame up uh, and I'll probably will use actually pocket holes, I think, to hold it together. Um, and then we'll have uh, one side that is a uh, solid sheet of MDF, one side that's a face frame with a door in it. I use my pocket hole jig to quickly add some pockets to the rails. Now, quite honestly, I expect the pocket holes to really just be clamps while I wait for the glue to dry. I find that clamping the two boards to my bench makes a much better seam when screwing in the pocket hole screws. And that's it! A completed face frame that our door fits into nicely. For those who follow all of my arcade builds, you know that I like to use cleats. Cleats give a little extra structural rigidity, but much more importantly, they make the assembly process much simpler. I used some spacer blocks so the base would sit level and then started assembling the cabinet. You can see how the cleats really make this simple. With everything lined up, I started adding glue and brad nails to complete the assembly. Brad nails are like little clamps that hold things in place while the glue dries. If you don't have a nailer, no big deal. You'll just need to wait about 30 minutes for the glue to dry before moving on. Now this is starting to resemble a cocktail table arcade. Included in my plans are spray and stick templates that you can use to make cutting out the various components of the arcade much simpler. I like to double up the pieces when there are duplicates and make two at the same time. I also include templates for drilling the control panels. I like to use a punch and divot the center of each button so that it's easy to place the drill bit in the exact center. I prefer to use Forstner bits when drilling these out, but paddle bits from Home Depot will work fine too. The templates really take all the work out of it.
There are several sections of the arcade that need to have T-molding slots added. It's super important we route these before assembly, since the router won't be able to reach these spaces once the glue-up is complete. Next I went to work building the two control panels. I used the same method as the base, using cleats, only smaller. Now, brad nails tend to split half-inch MDF, so I decided to just clamp it up and wait for it to dry. With the glue dry, I went to work routing out the T-molding slots. Again, this must be done before gluing them to the arcade, as the router will not reach later. I went to work cutting out the slot for the coin door. I used the jigsaw for this operation. A quick test fit and all is well. Before gluing on the control panels, I wanted to have some access ports behind them. I used the jigsaw to cut out a 2 inch slot behind where they will glue on. Then I added some glue, lined them up carefully, and then clamped them in place. With the cabinet base complete, it's time to start work on the tabletop. The tops of most cocktail table arcade cabinets are 1 inch thick, that's 25 millimeter. I could have just bought a sheet of 1 inch MDF, but then the prices of lumber these days. Instead, I decided to cut down two half inch thick pieces from the half inch MDF that I had already had on hand. I coated one side with a lot of glue. A lot. I then sandwiched them together, clamped them up, and let them dry overnight. The next day I trimmed it down to the final dimensions and attached a giant template. I used the jigsaw for this operation, and I like to use my air compressor to keep the dust out of the way, as the blower on the DeWalt kind of sucks. I tried to stay about 1 16th inch away from the line. I then used my orbital sander to remove the jigsaw marks and bring it down to the line. And then a quick sanding to the top. With all of the construction complete, it's time to give it all a nice coat of paint. I used the bench dogs from Rockler to keep the cabinet from sticking to the paper. I then shot the entire arcade with two coats of filler primer. After sanding, the filler primer looks sort of like plastic. It's really smooth. I then sprayed the cocktail table arcade with three coats of flat black. If you take your time, you will be amazed at the results you can get from rattle can paint. I began installing the tea molding. I decided this arcade was going to be black and yellow, Geek Pub colors. The smaller T-molding goes on pretty easy. The larger T-molding generally needs a rubber mallet to persuade it into place. In places where the corners are really tight, you may need to notch the T-molding to make it fit properly. We have an entire video on T-molding tips and tricks if you haven't seen it. Oh man, that looks sweet. Did you know we sell tea molding in the Geek Pub store? I flipped the tabletop over and installed the LCD panel. I just pulled this panel from a CCTV monitor I found on Amazon. I used its existing mounting brackets, drilled holes, and screwed it to the tabletop. Now we're in the home stretch. I started installing all of the components starting with the coin door. The joysticks just screw into the back of the panel. There are templates and the plans for drilling these holes. This is our yellow controller kit. 
The buttons just drop in the holes and you screw a nut on the back. The start and select buttons go on the front of the control panel. And there's plenty of room for the encoder board to be mounted right between the joystick and the buttons. Then it's just a matter of connecting all the cables, and I have detailed wiring instructions on the site. Each button gets a dedicated connection from the encoder, and the LED power is daisy-chained from one of the two power ports available on the board. With it all wired up, I installed the control panel and plugged the encoder into a USB power outlet. Let there be light! I like to have USB ports on my arcades for using external controllers. On the side of the arcade, I installed an IEC C14 power connection that is both fused and switched. To install the tabletop, I use these little L brackets from the hardware store to allow it to be removed later should the monitor ever need to be replaced. Okay, rather than trying to show how all of this um, goes together step by step on camera, I thought that would be rather monotonous and boring. Um, so I'm just going to show you kind of what I did um, from a completed perspective. So again, you know, monitor is at the top. This is just something that I uh, stole out of a CCTV monitor. It's a 4x3. It works fantastic for this type of use. Um, down towards the center, of course, is the coin door and the wires coming off the coin door. And then I've cut these um, access panels to get to the insides of the keyboards um, or the control panels I mean and then along the side is a um, power strip um, at the bottom is the 110 that is of course switched um, on the outside with a C14, IEC C14 and then the Raspberry Pi itself is just simply mounted over um, along the side and so I did a little bit of cable management in here. Um, it's not great, but it will do the job. Mm -hmm. 